jugs of corn liquor, ten stolen horses, and eight horse thieves. Maybe there's another one on the lookout. Oh, no. They wouldn't wander that far from them jugs. Boy, I could sure use some of that corn myself. Yeah. Let's go. Two hours from now, three jugs later, they're gonna be a lot easier. I ain't looking for easy. I'm looking for quick. Well, I'm dry. But there never was a jug of corn I was willing to get shot for. Freeze, there's only eight of them. What's your old fire hurry? Oh, he's been going like the heel flies was after him ever since we left Laredo. Well, maybe you two fellas got time to lollygag around up here, but I... All we gotta do is go down that hill nice and quiet, move in on them one at a time from behind, knock them off. Probably wouldn't even have to fire a shot the shape they're in right now. Well, now, hold on, Chad. I think how nice it'd be just to go moseying in there. Gather up on a wild bunch like that for once without all that firing and shooting and fighting. Yeah. Well, the way they're going, it ain't gonna be long, neither. Oh, maybe an hour? You two fellas coming with me, or do I have to do this alone? Got to be a woman. A red-haired woman. Blonde. Long, yellow hair. Bet you two dollars red. You're on, Reese. What color hair she got, Chad? I'm gonna ask you once more. You coming? Maybe got no hair at all. Well, no hair, no bet. Chad, what are you gonna do with a ball-headed woman? You two just stay here and amuse each other, huh? Just, just stay here. Hey, he's really going. Think we ought to go with him? Uh, relax. We cover him from up here. friend of his must really be something special. Yeah, the kind you can't keep waiting. I didn't know there was any like Captain Marito. Are you coming or staying? We're coming. You got us as anxious to get back to Laredo as you are. Then let's go. Come on. 
Better figure on sleeping with a boot on. This town's likely to fall apart tonight. Oh, it's fallen apart before. Yeah. Bunch of height hunters. Loaded with cash. High heeling it over to Laredo. Just noisy now, but four nights over is gonna be a lot more than just noise, I'll tell you that. Well now. Ain't that something? <laughs> Joe, you ever see anything like that? Yeah. Yeah, once in Abilene, Comanche Squaw was wearing it. Thank you, my good man. You know, Chad, hmm. the way I look at it, it's all right for a, for a woman to go gussying up to please a man. But when a man fancies up to please a woman, well, now... That means trouble. Never had to depend on fancy duds myself. Oh, Putting fancy duds on you, Reese, it'd be like putting a silver-mounted saddle on a plow horse. Who you calling a plow horse? And again, you take that same saddle and put it on a thoroughbred and... I'm a plow horse, and you're a thoroughbred? Huh. Well, if the saddle don't fit, Reese, you don't have to put it on. Well, uh, how come you, you never broke out those funny diddle outfits before, huh? Well, I guess I never had no reason to. Well, I guess this lady's special, Reese. Hey, Chad, how about Joe and me picking up a couple of girls at the cantina? And the six of us, we'll have a real time tonight. How about it? No, thanks, Reese. The young lady and I are going to have a very quiet dinner together. Well, we can be quiet. Reese, no. Definitely, positively, emphatically, no. Well, huh. Acts like we're... We're not good enough for his fancy sage hen. She must be staying in that hotel. Is that where he went? Probably having that quiet dinner in that private dining room. Nice too, ain't it, Reese? Oh, you know, Joe, I'm gonna I'm gonna figure out a way to get in that private dining room. Just kinda drop in, you know. <laughs> I know. Reese, you and me, we go out tonight. We're we're gonna be going over that crummy Laredo barn. Stop them wild hide hunters from getting too ornery. Oh, Carla can handle that. She can handle all that. Now, hold on, Reese. I don't know. From, from what you were saying, well, that's a wild bunch. They're liable to shoot up this whole town. Well, they're liable to wind up anywhere. They might even end up in that private dining room. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. If them hide men went loco, they might just go to that hotel. And scare that poor girl with Chad's. And that's right. Oh, that would be a darn shame. Hey, Joe, let's make you set them hide hunters straight on how it is here in Laredo, huh? Let's go. <laughs> Good seeing you again, Chad. Oh, it's been a while, Mr. Henderson. Yeah, you're looking fit. So are you, sir. Oh, I spent too much time behind desks and conference tables. Not enough on a good horse. Oh, we're always recruiting for the Rangers, you know. Well, now, that's very generous of you, Chad. But I'm afraid I won't be available for the next few years. Our company has raised the capital we needed for our section of the Transcontinental Railroad. Oh, now that's quite an undertaking. Well, thank you. Uh, we'll start construction in a few weeks. That's the reason I'm out here. Do a little recruiting myself. Oh, you are. Hello. That's what I like. Man who has good manners. I shouldn't be hogtied by them. Oh, uh, I want a word with the manager. I'll uh, see you two uh, down in the dining room. My father has a marvelous instinct for knowing when to leave a room. It's not instinct, it's you. Shh, 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 shh. It's been a long time. 
you didn't write. Letter writing's not my long suit, you know that. I have thought about you. I suddenly arriving here could have been awkward. It wasn't. It's like we'd seen each other yesterday. two years, I think perhaps your father can wait a few more minutes, huh? Gracie Buffalo men giving you any trouble? <laughs> They're very noisy. I'm very thirsty. But what's the cantina for? You're right, Reese. That's a mean looking bunch. Oh, I'm going over there lay down the law. Uh, wouldn't that cause the trouble we don't want? I know what I'm doing. I don't know what you're doing. You sure? That'd be me, mister. Well, mister, you're in Laredo now. Not out with the prairie dogs and the chaparral. And the rangers ain't gonna let you forget it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> are you a ranger? That's right. Now, you go on and enjoy yourselves. But just remember, you ain't the only people in town. Now, do your drinking here. No place else? No place else. We find you in that hotel bar, we're gonna have your hides, understand? Oh, yeah. don't go near the hotel bar. The hotel bar. That's an order. Looks good. You uh, wouldn't want to have a drink in that hotel bar, would you? Just what I've been thinking. Carla, the way go. Two whiskeys. Quiet tonight. Usual. Special uh, party going on in there? Oh, very special. Big railroad man. Started with champagne, then dinner wine. Now brandy. Who knows what's next? Yeah, who knows? Quite so much. Well, the hotel was much better than we expected. Yes, they do very well. Chad, I can't imagine what's kept you here. Oh, what, here in Laredo? Oh, I like a challenge. Well, that's what I was counting on. A real challenge. Father, you promised. No business tonight. All right, I promised. I'm a man of my word. Also, I'm more persuasive with a clear head. But, Chad, I'd like to talk to you. Say tomorrow morning at 10. Fine, sir. Now, if you will excuse a drowsy host. Yes, sir. Good night, Father. Good night. Good, Good night, night, sir. Dad. That's him. Ooh. A pretty important fella. Well, standing at a closed door is not my idea of a big evening. Oh, now hold it up a while, Joe. <laughs> I'd say if he's a gentleman, keep it all peaceable. And uh, don't go busting into that private dining room. There ain't no harm. Yeah, we want it nice and peaceable. Right in there, boys. Food, the best liquor, and plenty of it. Hold on now. You men can't go in there. These, these grizzly hide hunters bothering you? Oh, certainly not. Chat? They're welcome here. What do you think? Don't worry, man. We're going to take Didn't care of them. Didn't you now just get out of I said get out oh, of here. Boy. Chad, look at these men friends.
friends of yours? Mm. You pulled some stinking tricks in your day, Reese, but this one wins the prize. Well, you don't think I get this a purpose, did you? I'm just doing my duty. Who's keeping the peace? He didn't need no help. Chad's special girl. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Emily, can't punish a man for the way his friends behave. Oh, sure she can. It's a woman's privilege. But not when I care to exercise. You don't owe me an apology, Chad. Perhaps your friends uh, do. No, I think I'd better speak for my friends. Believe me, it'd be a lot simpler. All right. Anyway, it was a wonderful evening, and I'm sorry it had to end the way it did. There'll be others. Yes. Oh, uh, last night I promised you no business talk. But I have a claim staked on Chad's time this morning. You do. I'll get on with my shopping. See you this afternoon. I'll be here at 1.30. Okay. I promised Emily I'd show her some of the countryside this afternoon. Oh, good. I have a notion my daughter is more interested in the teacher than she is in the geography. However, last night I proposed to offer you a challenge. Are you interested? Yes, sir. In the next two years, we're going to put down over 800 miles of railroad track. That's a big job. Yes, it is a big job. We're going to need lots of men, all kinds of men. Most of the work crews we get are a rough bunch. They have to be in order to survive. That's why we need foremen that can handle these kind of men. You still interested? Go ahead. Sit down. Thank you. Chad, you've proved yourself with the Rangers. You're equal to any trouble that comes up. Exactly the kind of a man I need to boss one of my crews. How much do you earn here a month? Forty dollars. I can offer you ten times that, and expenses. Ten... Four hundred dollars a month? For openers. You do the kind of a job I know you can for us. And once the railroad's finished, the sky's the limit. That's what I call a tempting offer. There are no strings, Chad. Whatever happens or doesn't happen between you and Emily, I'd still like to have you working for me. What do you say? Well, <clears throat> I say I'd like to have a little time to think it over. Of course. We'll leave Laredo the day after tomorrow. If you want the job, you'll be ready to leave with us. That's fair enough. You're a young man with real promise, Chad. Now is the time to start realizing it. Your future's with us, not here in Laredo. I'll inform you of my decision, sir. Fine. Thank you very much. The Davis brothers have been spotted just east of Laredo. Trying to find a bank they haven't robbed yet, Captain? Bring them in. Yes, sir. We'll find Chad and the three of us will be no, right No, just the two of you. Cooper won't be going. But, Captain, we can't now go. Now, you and Riley should be able to handle the Davis brothers. It ain't that, Captain. We got to Cooper's got a few old friends in Laredo. He asked for a few days off. Yeah, I'll bet he did. And that's just why Joe and I got to take him along with us. Bennett, you're wasting time here. Uh, Captain, Chad's a good ranger, isn't he? Yeah. And, uh, old Chad wouldn't be too easy to replace, would he? No. Well, that just so happens, Captain that some of these friends that he's so partial to being close to, one of them's a young lady. Now, that's no big surprise. Captain, remember George Ferguson? Who? George Ferguson. Oh, Ferg, yeah, he got married. And Charlie Hewitt. Married. And Zach Owens, Leslie Young, they got married and resigned. 
And, Captain, if we don't take him with us, she's going to take him with her. That's what she's going to do, Captain. Well, I hate to lose Chad, but now, if he really loves this girl... Oh, he don't, Captain. He just thinks he does. Oh, shucks, Captain. It ain't nothing but a passing romance. And if he gets married and it's a passing, mark that poor boy for life. That'd be a crying shame, Captain. Crying shame, Reese. Captain, we got us a gold-plated idea. I am not interested. If you send Chad after the Davis brothers in the place of me, then while he's away, I can figure out a way where I don't... Are you suggesting I use my authority to deliberately interfere in the personal affairs of one of my men? No, sir. You're ordering me to go after the Davis boys? I am. Captain, you said I could have a couple of days off. I said I'd see what I could do. Why can't Reese go with you? Cooper, I have good and sufficient reasons for assigning you. Riley's waiting for you at the corral. Yes, sir. Can I at least go over to the hotel and tell her I'm not going to be there? You've lost a half an hour as it is. May I write her a note and have someone deliver it? Let's begin the cabin argument. Well, it ain't gonna do no good. Now remember, Joe, you're gonna keep him away just as long as you can now. Don't go getting your hopes too high, Reese. Girl looks a lot smarter than the one that wanted to marry old Joe Bill. Yeah, well, it's been my experience. The smart ones are just as jealous as the dumb ones. So long, Joe, and good luck. You're, uh, certain you wouldn't reconsider this, Captain? I mean, uh, I had a date with the young lady at 1.30. strength and efficiency. Is that clear? Yes, sir. 100%. Couldn't be clear, sir. A uh, Cooper left his note for a Miss Henderson at the hotel. Yes, sir. Just leave it to me, sir. Let's get it over with. I'll go at him from up on the high ground. Be easier if we just move in from the front. Well, you do want to get back to Laredo in one chunk, don't you, Chad? All right, I'll go around here. Slow and easy. Give me a chance to get into place. Joe, you're talking like there's 20 of them. There's only two. It only takes one of them to shoot you, Chad. You draw their fire, I'll go out this way.
I'm sorry to bother you. Yes. I'm, I'm trying to find Chad. You know Chad Cooper? I'm sorry, I uh, can't help you. Mr. Cooper was supposed to be here at 1.30, but he hasn't arrived yet. Oh, well, now, what do you know? That, that puts me in a terrible spot. Why do you want to see him? Why do I want to see him? Well, you might say that's a, a personal matter. I don't understand her too good, but, but now old Chad, he speaks Spanish perfectly. Seems he, he tried to pawn the wedding ring. You sure you ain't seen him, ma'am? What, uh, wedding ring? Well, I tried to explain to her, but... But a man has a right to pawn his own wedding ring if he needs the money, huh? Oh, fine-looking children, ain't they? You'd think they were 100% Mexican instead of being just half, huh? <laughs> Gracias, Carla. Gracias, gracias. De nada, querido. I always like a good joke. Especially the five dollars you promised me. Chad? What are you doing here? Yeah. Oh, come on. Well, what do you think? We are a parcel of sheep or something? A couple of Judas goats is more like it. Sit down. Now. <clears throat> when Miss Henderson joins us, you, Mr. Bennett, shall apologize to her for the little game you played this afternoon with Carla and her kids. You... You, Mr. Riley, you shall explain to Miss Henderson why I did not return at 1.30 this afternoon to take her riding. And again, Mr. Bennett, you shall tell her why she did not receive my note until after supper this evening. Is that clear? Shh. 
Well, you ever notice the minute a man gets serious about a woman, he can't take a joke and sours on his partners? It all goes together. <laughs> You two gentlemen just wait right there. I wonder what he's up to. I wonder if he knows. Well, uh, Miss Henderson, we... We just wanted you, you to... can save the apologies, Reese. However, we will accept your congratulations. Miss Henderson has just consented to become my wife. Good evening. I've decided to resign from the Rangers. Oh, he don't mean that, Captain. I mean it. He just got himself a little war paint on because he wants America. This is between Mr. Cooper and me. I'm not amused by Rangers who resign one day and are back asking for reinstatement the next. I won't be back, sir. You've thought this through carefully? Yes, sir. When do you want this resignation to take effect? Immediately. I'm leaving first thing in the morning. Good luck, Cooper. Thank you, Captain. Bennett, Riley, meet the marshal wagon train at Finley Grove. Escort them in Laredo. I have it word the Comanches are raiding. The wagon train will be an easy mark. Yes, sir. Any questions? Captain, a man like you ought to, ought to be able to come up with some real smart arguments. Smart arguments don't make an impression on a man with a pretty woman and marriage on his mind. Yes, sir. folks are going to be. Yeah, well, we can take a minute. You ain't going to do it. You're just making us sweat. Oh, Chad's got his mindset. My guess is, Reese, we, uh, we've seen the last of him. Well, I sure never would have thunk it. Some better come along, why? He just reached out and grabbed it. You call that something better. Chad does. Ah, shucks. Maybe it's better he quit anyway. You know, Joe, you're right. If a man's a quitter, I'd soon know it before any real trouble hits. See, Reese, he's, uh... He's got himself a whole new way of life. Well, shucks, he ain't wasting no worry on us. Well, I don't want to want to think harsh on him. Now, you listen to me, Reese. Old Chad was to get word that them Comanches had bushwhacked us, and we was laying right here in this dirt, bleeding to death. Shucks, he wouldn't even care. Yeah. Yeah. If he hears them Comanches bushwhacked us, he wouldn't even care. Yeah. Reese, I know what you're thinking, and it ain't gonna work. Now you go on and meet that wagon train. Chad and I'll be along. Reese, go on, I said. Meet me here to work on how I'm going to do it. I'll bet you $10 Chad don't get on that stage. Take it. Indian attack! Indian! 
still here, Chad? I thought you'd be gone. I'm looking for Parmalee. Well, he's not here, Reese. Well, he must be out on assignment. What'd you want him for? Comanches. Just hit that Marshall wagon train. How many, Reese? Oh, I don't know. They just uh, kept a coming. Not enough guns on that train to hold them off for long. Well, you didn't leave Joe out there. Well, one of us had to ride back for help. We drew straws. Mm-hmm. You want me to ride back with you? If you could, Chad. Uh-huh. Well, Reese, I'll tell you. When I get back there, I don't figure there's going to be any Indians. And you and Joe's going to have a nice big laugh. And the stage is going to leave without me. And then you're going to collect the five or the ten dollars or whatever it is. You bet Joe you could sucker me. Chad. Well, this is one bet you're going to lose, Reese, because I'm not fooled. And I'm not riding back with you. Give it up. <laughs> Wagon train at Friendly's Grove. Go tell Captain Parmalee. Ranger headquarters, Laredo. Good morning. Good morning. Emily's on her way down. Good. Stage is due to leave in about five minutes. Oh, fine. Oh, that's her luggage. Woman's idea of traveling light. Just the bare essentials. I know she's always had the best. I mean to see she always does. Oh, of course. But a word of advice. Don't hesitate to stand against her. When she's wrong, and she can be wrong, Emily can be very wrong, she'll move heaven and earth to avoid admitting it. So don't be intimidated. I'll remember that, sir. Fine. Oh, uh, we were talking last night after the party. Uh, she thinks she'd like to live in San Francisco while you're out with the construction crews. Mm -hmm. But she'll talk to you about that. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We better get on the stage. Ah, oh, here I am, hurrying at the last minute. I've been up since daybreak. Oh, excuse me. Let me get my hat here. The truth is, I didn't sleep. I'm so excited. It takes as long to load and unload Emily's luggage as it does to get from here to Washington. I can see. We have so many things to discuss. When and where we're going to be married, where we're going Chad? Chad? You're not listening. Oh, sure I am. Oh, that's another trick you've got to learn if you want to survive as a married man. How to look at your wife as if you were listening to her when you're not. Father, to listen to you talk, anyone would think you were the world's worst cynic. Chad. Would you excuse me, please? Oh, Captain. Trouble? Comanches. Hit the Marshal wagon train at Finley Grove. That's the train Reese and Joe are with. That's the train. How many hit them? 20, 30, maybe more. Well, you're going to need more men than that. The rest of the company's out on assignments. Well, Captain uh, Cooper, we have a long ride. Is there something wrong? I'm afraid so. I can't leave just yet. I'm sure the driver wouldn't mind waiting a few minutes longer. A few minutes won't do. My friends Reese and Joe are pinned down by a Comanche war party. Oh, that's awful. And you want to go after them? I have to. You can't. Emily, there's no choice. They're my friend. If I were out there, they'd come after me. No, it's all right. You can go on ahead. I'll cut across country and catch up with you in San Antonio. Austin at the latest. No, that is completely unthinkable. Chad, you're no longer a ranger. You're my fiancé. Now, the stage will be leaving in a few minutes, and I expect my fiancé to be on it with me. Now, that's only reasonable. <laughs> that's not the least bit reasonable. Darling, I respect your generous, high-minded feeling, but you must be realistic. Realistic? Can't you understand that I have an obligation to go after my friends? I don't think you have any right to. You, you don't... Well, Emily, I'm going. Well, then you can just forget about me. But this has not a custom thing to do with you and me. It just... Well, there's certain things a man's got to do. And now if we get married... Yes. Yes. If we get married, I wear the britches, not you. And if any orders are orders? given... Orders? What do you think I am, a uh, squaw? Oh, no, no, you're no squaw. And I suppose you're going to tell me what I am. Yes, I suppose I am. 
You're a woman without a fiance. Mr. Hannison, I'd appreciate it if you'd have the driver pitch down my luggage. I wish you luck, Emily. I hope you find the man that'll dance to the tune you call. But let me tell you something. Even if you do find him, you're not going to like him. Thanks a lot, Mr. Henderson, anyway. Goodbye. The man is right, Emily. Will you please remove Mr. Cooper's luggage? Got on those reinforcements soon? Yeah, any time now. Feel good. I know how you feel about a man asking to be reinstated, sir. I said it didn't amuse me. It doesn't. But if you give me your word, it won't become a habit. You got it. Consider yourself reinstated. Thank you, sir. Now, the only chance we've got is the element of surprise. All right. Good to see you, Captain. How bad is it here? Not as bad as it could have been, sir. The next time you'll listen to me when I tell you something. You know, Reese, you got a great gift. You can make the truth sound like a lie. You missed a stage, Chad. Sure did. I missed that stage, dog. Gone if I did. O'Reilly. Ten dollars. You look like a prize, Bill. Uh, 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 u
Yeah, the party ain't gonna forget, I'll tell you that. Red Island ain't been watered down, Chihuahua. And food that tastes like food oil. Instead of a mouthful of red peppers. And girls, lots and lots of girls. Ah, the red air's mine. Remember, she's taking boys. Oh, that's right. I forget. Hey, Marvin. Well, hi, kiddies. How you doing? You promised to give us a ride on the horse. Sure I did. And I will sometime. Now, now, we have waited and waited. But, kids, I'm going to a party. <laughs> Oh, now, don't cry, honey. Come on, don't cry. You promised. Never thought a man like Reese Bennett would break a promise. Make a little niña cry like that. Well, all right, all right. Now, come on, kids. Come on, come on, come on, kids. And don't worry about that redhead, Reese. I'll entertain her till oh. we get back. Ten dollars, querido. Ten? You said five. I say five for each one. Now, I could take my babies back home if you think the price is too high. Está bien. Ten it is. Una tramposa. Gracias. Placer. Vámonos, compadre. Hasta luego, Reed.